Two people eat the same banana. One person's blood sugar goes sky high and the other person's barely budges. And then another person eats a cookie and has a more stable blood sugar response than when they ate a banana. It sounds a little crazy, right? And in one of the most fascinating studies I've ever come across, 800 people's blood sugar response was tracked for one week, meaning every meal, every snack, everything that went into their body, their blood sugar response was tracked. And while researchers thought that their blood sugar response would be predictable, what they found was that our blood sugar response was highly individual and more like a fingerprint, completely unique to us. And what this means is you could look at something like the glycemic index or the glycemic load and believe you're eating a blood sugar stabilizing meal, maybe like sushi, where your blood sugar response could go higher than when you eat something like ice cream. And when I did this for myself, what I found was so empowering because I had always heard that I shouldn't be eating bread because, you know, those carbohydrates break down into sugar, which they do. But for me, because I'm so active and I often move after my meals, I actually did very well with bread and I realized I could reincorporate it into my life. But my point is everyone's response to certain foods is highly individual and it's something that we should seek to understand if we're looking to be our most vibrant versions of ourselves. I also love that it's super empowering and doesn't necessarily mean we have to be restrictive all the time. In fact, there are ways to bring the foods we love into our lives even if they do result in blood sugar spikes when we just have a little strategy. Number one is to just try a glucometer that you can buy them at places like Rite Aid, they're relatively inexpensive, and you can just start testing your own blood sugar. And you could do something like first thing in the morning after about 12 hours of fasting and even two hours after meals to just see how the food you're eating is affecting your blood sugar. Two is to wear a continuous glucose monitor. Now it might sound intimidating, but it just pops onto the back of your arm. It actually doesn't even hurt when you apply it. And you can look at your unique blood sugar response in real time with apps on your phone. And three is just to track your meals, your mood, your energy, your sleep patterns, um, and notice how do you feel two hours after meals? How do you feel three hours after meals. Are you hangry? Are you hungry again? These are all signs that you might be riding the blood sugar roller coaster. And you might want to tweak your meal ratios. And I know people tell you, you don't need to obsess about every single thing you eat and what it does to your blood sugar. And I do think that's true. But what I also think is true is that if you don't know what's happening with your blood sugar, you could be eating a healthy diet and you could be spiking your blood sugar into pre-diabetic and diabetic ranges often. And this will if left unaddressed over time, lead to a significantly increased risk of things like insulin resistance that comes along with reproductive issues and heart issues and um, Alzheimer's. And if you're new to my channel, blood sugar stability is something we're gonna talk a lot about because it doesn't have to be hard and it's very worthwhile to understand. So subscribe to this channel for more fun insights and let me know in the comments which one you're gonna try and if this resonated with you.